Welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Hofstall. And today we're talking about Bram Stoker's Dracula. When did you read this novel? I read it in college, actually. And I was in a gothic fiction class, and of course we were assigned to read it. And um, it was pretty good. It didn't, it didn't really um, have the sort of lasting hold on me that... Frankenstein did in some of the other classic horror novels but uh, overall I enjoyed it and it was kind of cool to actually read the literature that has influenced so many movies. How about you? I don't remember when I read the book I think it was like 7th or 8th grade and then I, I appreciated it but again Frankenstein was probably more my, fav- my favorite of that genre and then I saw this movie in the theater when it came out. Do you remember when you saw this movie? Yeah, actually, uh, it's kind of a distinct memory because, and I've, I've told the story before, I don't know if I've told it on a podcast, but we rented it and it happened to be on the first night that we moved into a, a new house. And it was the biggest house we'd ever lived in. And after watching it, this, I think, is one of the few movies I watched as a kid that I actually was scared. Like, I felt very afraid because I went up to my new room and my new bed and I kept picturing um, Gary Oldman, you know, as sort of as the old um, Dracula when he's all ugly at the beginning. And um, I was so scared. I remember getting out of bed and my and going to my mom being like, I'm scared. And she's like, we shouldn't have watched Dracula, which... <laughs> You know, she was right. I was like nine. Watching this back now, I'm like, okay, that was extremely inappropriate. Um, but yeah, it was one of the few movies that, that actually scared me as a kid. Of course, it, it was kind of that one-two punch of it. I was in a new environment and everything, but it really kind of got under my skin. And so yeah, it was basically the opposite reaction I usually had to horror movies. It was just like, I want to see this again. And I remember, and I've, I've said this before, like I laid in bed that night. And trying to get the image of Dracula out of my head, I just kept thinking about Fred Savage and how he was going to be my boyfriend someday. <laughs> and how cute he was in the Wonder Years. And I kept just sort of training myself, like, think about his cute face instead of Dracula! Aww. Well, this movie, I, I was older than you when I saw it, of course, because it came out in 1992. It has a 73% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. It has a budget of $40 million and ended up making $215 million at the box office. And you know what part of that was? They wanted a bankable star who would bring in money, and that was Keanu Reeves at the time. He was hot, and people wanted to go see him, like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? You were like, I want to see Keanu. What did you like him from, from before? I mean, it was Bill and Ted, you know, and then it's like, oh, Keanu Reeves is cute, and now he's, like, going to be this, like, dashing guy. I don't think he's a great actor in this movie, Meg. I People love him in other things, and maybe he is great, but I don't think he's very good in this movie. I mean, I, I think you are... I think everyone agrees with you. I, I mean, there's memes all over about how he sort of ruined this movie. He's not... He's This is, this is an example of bad casting. Also, like, his hair is all floppy in it, and he doesn't really fit the era. Um, when I mentioned to Luke, I'm like, yeah, I, I had to... I, I watched Bram Stoker's... Dracula today for for a rewind he just automatically like did a imitation of Keanu Reeves in that movie because it's sort of ridiculous but you know what apparently it brought in the girls because that's um what Francis Ford Coppola was saying like they want to cast somebody hot right now in order to make box office so I guess they did the designers were told by FFC I'm just gonna say that it takes a long time to create things weird either from research of the era or just from their nightmares. He didn't want anything typical, that anything that felt like a vampire movie that had come before. Did you feel that? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely, I mean, of course, right away, you're like, okay, this is a big budget Dracula movie. Um, It had this feeling, obviously, it had these beautiful Victorian sets and the costumes are wacky. And by the way, we're filming in an airport, if you guys can't hear about all the flights behind us. There's this aesthetic that is sort of unexpected. I mean, even like, and it's it's sort of almost laughable, like Dracula's hair. 
uh, in the beginning, and I know I've seen it, like, spoofed and things like that because it's sort of silly. But um, something that's not silly that, that I sort of loved, they went a little too cheeky at the end with it, but I really loved, like, the shadows in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Part of that is Francis Ford Coppola didn't want to use CGI. He wanted to use techniques from film history, like George Melier used that you do things on set or within camera to create CGI effects, not not CGI, but to, to create effects so that it felt more real and more historic. Yeah, I mean, I appreciated that. I thought I thought that um, those sort of things came across like the practical effects and the the makeup on the face. I mean, that was excellent even for 1992 so I mean they definitely had a budget and they definitely had an eye for those things. I love Winona Ryder and I loved that she was in this movie at the time because two of my favorite movies at that time were Beetlejuice and uh, and Edward Scissorhands and so to see her or I don't is this pre-Edward Scissorhands I can't think of when that movie came out. It might have been pre by a couple of years but uh, I I wonder if part of why I was so scared as a kid when I saw this movie is because I love Lydia so much and like seeing her in this sort of um, environment might have been kind of scary for me um, but yeah I mean that that's kind of like the opposite of Keanu Reeves where it's like perfect casting like she she's just made for this role like you can't imagine anybody else doing it I also love Gary Oldman. I think I think he's amazing. I didn't love him at this time. Like I, this, I wasn't old enough, smart enough to realize what a gift we had in Gary Oldman as an actor. But he reminds me a bit of, like when he's looking his young self, of his character in The Scarlet Letter. Which I maybe that's not a great movie, but I freaking love it. <laughs> that's fine. You can love it. Um, oh, and that's another like you know, literature uh, made movie. Um, So here's another reason why I think I was scared and terrified of this movie when I was a kid. And I'd like to know what you think about this. This movie is sex, 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 sex. That's all it is. To me, it's just S-E-X the whole time. Did you feel that way? Yeah, and and it's uncomfortable. Like, and and, uh, part of what Francis Ford Coppola said, uh, I'll probably get to the quote later in my notes, is something about how vampires use sex as the way to lure people in and I don't know. Would you become a vampire Meg if Carrie Elwes was like a sexy vampire and he's like we can live together forever but you have to become a vampire would you? Maybe (laughs) but I actually forgot he was in this movie so when he came in I I had a big smile on my face. I won't go on and on about it. I'm sure you guys are all tired of me talking about (laughs) Carrie Elwes but I was very excited that he was in this. Okay. I forgot that he was in it too. Um, Yeah, so that was a nice surprise. Um, Yeah, I think... I I don't know what it is about going back to vampires and and sex. I don't know why they have to be sexy all the time. I'd love to see some... I'm I'm sure they exist, but I'd love to see some, like, non-sexy vampire movies. Because, I don't know, it just, like, this movie to me, it felt like too much. And I think the 90s, like, they were really going hardcore on the sexy time movies. And, like, I don't know, I was watching it by myself. It's not like I was covering my kids' eyes or I had to worry about anything. But it just felt like it was such, done with such a heavy hand to me. I don't know. It's just like, okay, we get it. Everything's about sex. I don't know. That, that, that was something that bothered me. And I'm not a prude. I like sexy times. But it just, it felt like it was so thick. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it has great makeup and effects. Um, it actually won the Oscar for costume design. The costumes are amazing. Um, A part that made me laugh was if you remember, young Gary Oldman is like trying to get Winona Ryder and he's doing this see me thing but they use that in what we do in the shadows and I was laughing so hard this time. That made me laugh too because I remembered it from what we do in the shadows and he's like see me and then the guy does and then he's like meh. (laughs) Or like he actually had to bang on the window for it to work. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that was great. So yeah, I know. And that's the thing is I'd seen that, I've seen this spoof so many times. There were times where I was almost kind of rolling my eyes like, um, I don't know, like when, 
I, I don't know if it's supposed to be funny. It seems kind of funny when, like, Dracula, like, licks his razor that he nicks himself on. It seemed ridiculous. I yeah. feel like it was supposed to be scary. No, I guess that was, I read about that, and that was improv, and they kept it because it was funny. Because they had been drinking on set, and he was okay. drunk by that point, and so it was funny. Okay, well, and that was a thing I wasn't really sure. <laughs> um, Lucy's wedding dress is the most extra thing the collar do you know what i'm talking about and then she comes back from the dead and it and or as the dead undead it is so over the top would you ever wear a dress like that <laughs> <laughs> yes if i had like reason to but uh if i guess if i'm a vampire with carrie and oh i i promise i wasn't gonna talk about him anymore if i was a, if i was a vampire with some hog, other vampire guy i would totally wear that dress and like go around haunting crypts and carrying children around like she was yeah speaking of that scene so the thing that i that always makes me cringe in movies is when a little child is crying they're really crying because they're really scared of their mom left the room and then they start filming apparently that little girl was terrified of the actress and that full makeup is scary and so it was really hard to get more than a few takes because that girl was terrified isn't that so sad that is sad i mean now that's real method acting for you um yeah that's that's a great scene i like when they go and and she's in the crypt and you know that whole thing of her getting bit and i i liked when gary oldman was like a werewolf type looking thing that was cool so, I mean, it's funny, though, watching it now. I was like, why was I so scared of this movie when I was a kid? I could handle everything else. I definitely was watching this time, and I, and I, I didn't, it didn't necessarily scare me this time around. But, um, again, like, for 92, like, those practical effects and everything are really good. So I feel like, and even back when I saw it, I feel like it's a well-made movie. Like, there's a lot of beautiful things about it, but I feel like it's boring. Oh, it was boring. It's it's at least 20 minutes too long. And, um, I, I mean, here's the thing. I don't necessarily think Dracula's the best book in the world either. So maybe they had boring source material? I don't know. But I think it's a little up its own ass a little bit. Like, I think it's a little lush and a little... I think it's a little bit much. And I think... I don't know. I watched it, and I was just kind of like... I, I thought there were some great performances in it. Winona Ryder, her big eyes, she looked beautiful. The costumes were wonderful. That's a well-deserved Oscar right there. But, like, overall, I just felt like it was a movie of its time. And, like, in 1992, it made sense. But, like, right now, I don't, I don't think it really resonates. I don't know. So, you were saying, you know, maybe it's the source material. Uh, but a few years ago, in October, I went to Louisville to see Lisa, our mixologist, in a stage adaptation of Dracula, and it actually was pretty freaking great, because it was one of the few plays that I've seen that had jump scares, and actually, people were, like, screaming in the audience. I got to see an evening performance with the public, and then I also got to see a student matinee, so it was all, like, high school students, and that crowd was the best crowd I've ever seen a play with in my life, because they were like, damn, about everything. And it was, it was it translated well onto stage I'll say that and they had of course the theater was amazing and they had a lot of special effects and Lisa was great and um, it it didn't feel too long or anything uh, whereas this movie was like ugh. like Anthony Hopkins comes in like at the end he's Van Helsing right yeah and it's just like oh my god we're still going there is a great line though and his response um, I th is it Carrie Elvis or one of the boyfriends one of the suitors is like, was she in great pain? And his response is pretty funny. I can't remember what he said. It's like, oh, yeah, um, she was in great pain, and then we chopped her head off or oh, something. Oh, yeah, he's like, yeah, we, we did this, and then we chopped her head off, and then we buried it, and then this, and then Keanu's like, Ahem, I've got Winona writers here. She can't be hearing these things. And these it, fragile it, it, women. And his accent literally sounded like what yeah. I just said. <laughs> I mean, my God. And just think, this was also the era that Kevin Costner played Robin Hood and he couldn't do the British accent hence the Carrie Elwes men in tights where he's like some of us can actually do a British yeah. accent well he is British but yeah yeah I mean here's where art and commerce you know there's always that intersection where it's like we, it, we would all love to be successful and like go and make movies for studios but guess what when you make a movie for a studio they're like 
um, Keanu Reeves is going to be Jonathan and there's nothing you can do about it. And what do you do? I mean, you work with what you've got. And we're, I don't want to malign Keanu Reeves, but I'm not the first, we're not the first people to do it about this movie. Um, is this the one, I think, um, this, all this press was coming out, uh, Winona Ryder saying they're married because of this movie? Yeah, that just happened. I read about it and then the articles came out, like, right after we rewatched this, that it was an actual priest or whatever that married them during that scene, so they actually were married. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but she said that, um, because I guess they have some movie coming out, or it came out already or something. I guess they've been in several movies together. Um... And she's like, yeah, I think we're, I think we're kind of married, haha. Ha. So um, that's kind of cute. But you know, it's so '90s. I feel like this would be, this is a great movie. Anybody is nostalgic for like just the '90s sexy times when it was like Basic Instinct and single white female and like all that and everything was all like, like even when he was a werewolf monster, it had to be sexual. It was just so, it was just dripping with it all the time. Yeah, it, and almost, almost too much. Let's rank this movie on a scale of 0 to 10. 0 being you hated it, 10 being you think it's a perfect movie. What should we use for our scale? I want to use Lucy Collars. Okay. Like her head, you know, in the collar of that wedding dress. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I'm, I'm going to give it 5. There were some good performances. It's got a big budget. It's nice to look at. Um, but underneath that... It's the kind of like air, and it's sort of like instead of healthy blood, it's like there's nothing there. There's no more blood. This this vampire has been exsanguinated, or this person has. So I give it five because it just kind of felt like meh. I'm gonna give it a six because I think it's beautiful. I think it's a well-made movie, but it just doesn't. I, I don't. I'm not gonna seek out a rewatch anytime soon, if ever again. Yeah, I mean, I have to think back to when I was a kid, and I was like, I don't want to watch that again. And it was like, I I don't know what it was in particular that bothered me. I mean, it had Carrie in it, but um, I had that feeling again after I watched it. It was just so self-serious. And, like, you know, when there was that supposedly funny moment, I wasn't even sure if I was supposed to laugh because the tone didn't really allow for it so I don't know it just it just felt really over the top and not in a great way for me have you written and I'm sorry if I have forgotten have you written any vampire stories no um vampires are difficult I mean you know it's funny like as a as a horror author I'll see like you know calls for submission for horror some things sometimes and it literally says no vampires um they kind of have a bad rap rep right now because, you know, I think at, like, Twilight, you know, was sort of made fun of, and, um... And True Blood was at the same time, and so it just seems like there were a lot of vampires for a long time. So it was sort of like some vampire exhaustion, and I don't know, I mean, I... I, w I would like to try writing about vampires, but I would definitely do it in a completely different way. They're not gonna be sexy time, okay? <laughs> I just... It's so obvious, like... I don't know. I, I want them to, like, be... You know, I was wondering, I was thinking while I was watching, I'm like, why do I love werewolves so much? Like, what is it about werewolves? And I think it's the duality of that they're, like, a good person most of the time, and then they have this, like, this bad part of them inside. And I think vampires, unfortunately, come off a little... Um, flat sometimes where it's just like they're just like all I care about is blood and having sex with everyone and drinking blood and it's it's almost like their their um, desires are so base. base yeah that it's just like I don't know it just kind of comes off boring to me I mean there are good vampires stories out there in movies I just I, I think I think we need some I think we need some new some new subject matter I think that is the inspiration for you to write something and create it. I obviously love Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. And, you know, I guess it's focusing on different things than the sexy time with the vampires. But also, they have vampires with souls and vampires who are good guys. And I don't know, it just feels like it's different than a lot of times how they're portrayed. 
there's like more dynamic characters and it's nice TV show you get to like explore some more um, personality traits although I mean I liked True Blood for a while and then I gave up because again it was just kind of like okay I get it you know like nothing's really happening or whatever so but yeah I mean there's good there's good vampire stuff out there it's just this one just fell flat for me I agree it's time for our fast forward segment and we want to talk to you about a TV show that you should check out. It premiered a couple of weeks ago on NBC and it's called Manifest. Now if you're going to just watch one episode of this show, watch Monday's episode because somebody we know is on it. Yeah, um, Kelly's playing Koi, but uh, our very own Lisa Bull, our mixologist, is going to be in this episode of Manifest on NBC on October 15th, right? Now, we can't tell you anything about her character, but we're going to tweet the heck out of it after the show. So, Monday night, if you're looking for something to watch, watch Manifest. Yeah, and, I mean, if you have time, watch the episodes beforehand so you're all caught up and you're ready and the concept is really cool. And, I mean, Lisa's in it, so there you go. Go forth and watch Manifest. We hope you're having a great week, Horror Rewind listeners. Until next time, we'll see you in the horror section. Bye.